Good morning everybody from Iowa here and uh, thank you for stopping by my channel. Please subscribe and uh, hit the like button. I'd appreciate it very much and I appreciate my subscribers so much. Bless their hearts. Uh, the U.S. Air Force has taken responsibility for the wrongful release of the confidential personal records of a Republican <coughs> running for Congress from Indiana's first congressional district. The leak records contain sensitive details about her sexual assault while in service. Jennifer Ruth Green is the GOP nominee going up against incumbent Re Representative Frank Mervin, Democrat Indiana. Representative Frank Mervan, Democrat Indiana, who first won the seat in 2020. I'll get it right, people. Hang in there. <laughs> Two GOP House members from Indiana issued a joint statement relaying the details of a conversation with Air Force Inspector General Lieutenant General Stephen Davis about the leak. Representative Jim Banks, Republican from Indiana, and Larry Bouchon, a Republican Indiana, said that they were provided details about how Green's records came to be released by the Air Force Personal Center. Bank service serves on the House Armed Services Committee. The statement said that Davis informed the congressman that the leaker of Green's records have been identified and will be held accountable. An investigation is also reportedly underway to determine whether the leaker had any political or financial mo motives as well as whether they acted alone or in cooperation with any other persons or organizations. What a terrible thing to be reported. The Inspector General also said the Air Force is examining whether it needs to strengthen policies relating to its handling of confidential records. Green's confidential records became part of a political report earlier this month by reporter Adam Wren, W-E-N, W-R-E-N, sorry. The report alleged that the records were obtained through a normal public records request and were obtained from a person outside the Mervan campaign. And that is spelled M-R-V-A-N, Mervan, Mervan campaign. Sorry if I'm not pronouncing that correctly. The political report stated that Green was sexually assaulted by an Iraqi serviceman by grabbing an... I'm not going to say with the rest of that. During a visit of the National Training Center, the statement by Banks and Bouchon said that the USAF has improperly affected a competitive house race, and they demanded full transparency for the benefit of voters in advance of Election Day. They identified the person who provided the leak records to the political reporter as an opposition research firm who intended to smear a service member who happens to be running for public office. Christiana Pushaw, who has extensive experience in dealing with media relations as a member of Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' re-election campaign, said opposition research firms often do public records requests in order to give media outlets cover for publishing confidential material. The records reported by Politico were clearly not subject to disclosure under public records request. A spokesperson for the Air Force Inspector General's office told reporters that it appears the confidential records were released by a junior individual who didn't follow proper procedures. Green wrote to the U.S. Attorney with jurisdiction over the matter earlier this month, requesting an investigation into how the documents made their way to Politico. She said that since the report was published in the closing weeks of her campaign for Congress, it appeared clear to her that it was a politically motivated leak. Very disrespectful, in my opinion, only. But um, these days, you never know. 
you just never know. Oh my goodness. President Trump says he loves the idea of testifying before January 6th committee. I'm so glad he's going to. I just hope that the information he gives is very correct. You know, Nancy Pelosi's hand-picked January 6th committee voted unanimous, un, unanimously on Thursday subpoena, to subpoena President Donald Trump to testify before the panel. Trump reportedly said that he loves the idea of testifying when he learned of the news. Trump said he would be pleased to talk about how corrupt the election was, but see, he's not letting that go. He should let that go and just get to the truth of everything. He just can't get over that. How corrupt the committee was, how Nancy Pelosi did not call up the National Guard, which he asked for, after he recommended that she do so three days before January 6th because he had a gut feeling. Now, I hope this is not a repeat of a video I've already done. But uh, he felt that the National Guard should be called and he asked her to do that. Never did it. Trump told Fox News Digital that Pelosi's committee is a hoax, a sham, a par partisan witch hunt, that is continuation of the witch hunt that has gone on since the great day of our country that I came down the golden escalator with our fir future first lady. Well, you know, we've heard this so many times over and over and over. Yeah, they have no case, they have no ratings, so they have to try to do this to get publicity. And it tells again about him asking Pelosi very nicely, you know, to please get the National Guard alerted in case they should be needed. Because he just, you know how you get feelings and, and they won't leave you and that tells you you better pay attention. And that's what he was doing. And it just goes on and on. I'm not going to read. I'm going to find another article. But um, I don't know. It's, it's quite a deal here. But I did, a, I did another video similar to this. So I'm not going to repeat this one. No. Let's move on to something else. I just hope that the truth will come out. But he cannot let that go two years ago. And he, that's... To me, he should let that go and tend to what they're doing to him now. You know, it's just, uh, I don't know. Let's try this one here right quick. I got a couple minutes left here yet. Oh, I'll tell you. One thing after another. I gotta move my camera over a little bit. Oh, I better move it over a lot, I guess. Hang on there, we're gonna get there. A little bit more, if I don't lose my camera, I'll be in good shape. You know how this goes. I hope everybody had a blessed week last week and uh, they were very well blessed with all kinds of blessings. The times are getting harder. We've all been warned about that. So just keep your faith. That's all we can do. One of the dominant themes in current liberal messaging is that the de democracy is endangered by waves of misinformation and conspiracy theories. I have to move my <coughs> crossover. But aren't liberals occasionally guilty of uncorking wild conspiracy theories that don't turn out to be true? An obvious sore point is the liberal notion that Donald Trump colluded with the Russian government to steal the 2016 election.
conspiracy theory so strong that the media obsessed over it for years, till Special Counsel Robert Mueller concluded that it didn't really exist. I mean, my goodness. On Oct and I did another video, it's coming back to me now, similar to this one. On October 21st, the leftist group called Individual put out a video with Hillary Clinton claiming right-wing extremists are plotting a coup in 2024. I know we're all focused on the 2022 midterm elections, and they are incredibly important, Clinton said. But we also have to look ahead because, you know what? Our opponents certainly are. Right-wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election, and they're not making a secret of it. It came with a website, crushthecoop.org, and that's C-O-U-P, crushthecoop.org. Uh, I don't think that, uh, it's just the end of a sentence, that last dot. There, in all capital letters, they warned Mega has a plan to steal the election 2024. We have to stop them today. The conspiracy is that our radical Supreme Court will decide the state's legislatures can overturn election results. I don't know about that. Here's how you can tell this video with 3 million views on Twitter is embarrassing to the liberal media who bray daily about election deniers and stop the steal wackos. Clinton's echo was not helpful uh, to their narrative, so it was overwhelmingly skipped. How is this not newsworthy? Consider Clinton was the 2016 Democrat nominee for president and insisted when she lost that Trump was an illegitimate president. Searching through Nexus, N-E-X-I-S, you find ABC ignored it. As did NBC and PBS and NPR and even MSNBC. Then turn to print journalists. The Associated Press ignored it. New York Times, Washington Post, and USA Today couldn't locate the clip. On October 30th, nine days later, CBS faced the nation. Host Margaret Brennan, Marguerite Brennan mentioned it when Representative uh, is seen Patrick Maloney, Democrat in New York, insisted they would abide by the 2022 election results. I'm glad you said that, Brennan responded, because there's been a lot of attention drawn to comments by some Democrats, including Hillary Clinton, who just released a taped statement online where she was talking about upcoming elections. She said right-wing extremists already have a plan to literally steal the next presidential election. And they're not making a secret of it. Brennan asked, I understand hyperbole, but would you agree that that's not helpful in the current environment to talk about plots to steal elections? Maloney professed, I don't understand what that means, and I didn't see the comment. Also on Sunday, Senator Rick Scott, Representative Florida, brought it up in passing on CNN's State of the Union, we have got Hillary Clinton saying... The 24 elections could be stolen. We have got Stacey Abrams saying she didn't lose. On Halloween, journalist on CNN's Inside Politi Politics finally addressed it, only to dismiss it. CNN host John King played the brief clip of Scott, not any film of Clinton, and proclaimed, But if you want to say that those things are wrong, let's say that they are misdemeanors down here comparing to saying the January 6th defendants are being prosecuted. Persecuted. Yeah, persecuted, not prosecuted. Persecuted. Sorry about that. CNN reporter Manuel Radu agreed saying if you're going to criticize what Hillary Clinton said about 2024, perhaps makes a point of the fact that Donald Trump has been making this the centerpiece of everything. But that's their problem. Clinton sounds like Trump. So the media can't honestly acknowledge that it exists. I don't know about you, but 
You know, I have a little, I shouldn't say little, <laughs> I've got um, uh, three bottles of wine in my refrigerator because when my kids can make it home for Thanksgiving or Christmas, we always have a glass of wine with our dinner. But you know, there's a saying, if you've got wine, why wine? Now this sounds whiny to me, but that's just my opinion. Don't criticize me for that. I should be liable to have an opinion, you know. But uh, I think that maybe Hillary needs a little wine with her wine. Okay, folks. I'll be back later. God bless you, and you are a blessing.